Alrighty, so the next thing you do after you build a team, I highly suggest play testing it before whatever tournament or event you're using it in comes up. Uh, you never know what you can learn in just a couple of matches with a team. Uh, just to go over the team again briefly, we have Mega Heracross here, running max speed and max attack. Tyranitar to be kind of our Talonflame check, uh, running Ice Beam just in case Glyscore comes in to ruin things. Uh, Venusaur, this is a more specially defensive build that we have with Sleep Powder, Leech Seed, Sludge Bomb, and Giga Drain. We have Vaporeon with Citrus Berry designed mainly to try to pass substitutes to other Pokemon on the team so that they can come in safely. We have Talonflame because it's Talonflame. We just need a nice offensive presence on the team. Uh, and then finally we have Klefki which is kind of just there to be annoying and to set up spikes and slow things down to make it easier for Heracross to do its thing. Things to keep in mind when playtesting is have some ideas uh, for other options for your team. For example, I said one of the things for this team is going to be speed control. Outside of Talonflame, this team is actually pretty slow, uh, and so ways you can handle that, for example, I can use Thunder Wave like I'm using with Klefki, or you can use Sticky Web or just have a choice scarf Pokemon on your team designed to revenge kill. So I have several options that I can revert back to if the team that I have does not work out. It's also good to have a couple of backup Pokemon in mind, but we'll get to that in a minute. I was not expecting to find a battle so soon. So let's see here, my opponent has Gengar, Cloyster, Garchomp, Smeargle, Weavile, and Medicham. Alrighty then. He has a pretty sizable fighting weakness. One, two, three, weak to fighting. Uh, let's see. Talonflame kind of runs train on this team if I can weaken everything. Uh, Mega Heracross, if I can take care of Gengar, Mega Heracross, or bring it in with a sub, then Mega Heracross will be doing pretty well. Okay, so the best lead here, he's probably expecting me to lead with Klefki. Um, I can't do much with Tyranitar until I take care of Tyranitar and or Metacham. Not Tyranitar, Garchomp. I don't know why I said that. Uh, so I think my best lead here is actually going to be... Well, he might lead with Smeargle just to get up his entry hazards. Hmm. I think my best lead is actually going to be... Vaporeon. That way if he leads with Smeargle, I can just get up a substitute and baton pass it. I can also break his lead with Sash. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Alright, so he is going to lead with Smeargle. Um, I'm expecting him to just put up a sticky web or maybe set up an entry hazard of some sort, so we're just going to substitute up. Oh, there's the Stealth Rocks there, which is kind of annoying for Talonflame, especially because I don't have a spinner on this team. Something else that I need on this team for sure. Um, but I expect for him to just try to set up some more, actually. I don't expect for him to do... Yeah, there's a sticky web, so let's just break his sash so we don't have to deal with that. I don't normally get burn when I use um, Scald. I don't really know why. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and Baton Pass in to another Pokemon here. Hopefully he doesn't break my Sash. Maybe he'll just try to set up some more. He might switch out. That would be great because then I can see what he goes out into and I can bring in something a little bit better to take it on. Uh, he tried for Spore for some reason. I'm not sure completely why because I have a substitute up. But thanks for the free switch there. Definitely going to go right on into Heracross so that I can Mega Evolve quickly and early and start putting some pressure on his team because um, I'm not going to be faster than him but when I mega evolve I doubt he's going to be able to break my substitute now let's see here uh, he has let's see rock blast hits everything there except for Garchomp at least neutrally uh, or Metachamp is also resistant to that close combat he could bring in Gengar very easily in fact I think Gengar is the best switch in here actually which means might just want to go for well, I might miss the Rock Blast. Hmm. Pin Missile hits everything neutrally. So, well, not neutrally. It, hits, it has the best coverage on his team. He has some things that resist it, uh, but that's going to be the best thing that we have here. He goes for Magic Coat. I'm not sure why, again, um, against a Heracross, I'm not sure what a Magic Coat would have accomplished. Magic Coat, of course, bounces moves back, such as Entry Hazards or Status Condition moves such as Thunder Wave, Spore, Sleep Powder, Stealth Rocks, uh, Leech Seed, Spikes, all those get bounced back, but I'm not sure what he was expecting from Heracross as far as that goes. Uh, he maybe was just death-froddering 
it so that he could get in a free switch in, which is the only thing that really makes sense there to me. He brings in Mega Metacham, or he brings in Metacham. I don't think he's going to use it as his Mega. I think he's just going to try to break my substitute with a uh, priority attack here. Oh, he just goes for Psycho Cut. Alrighty, well, I'm probably going to kill him with the Pin Missile here. Definitely, that's fantastic. Having Metacham out of the way definitely allows Tyranitar to support Heracross a lot better now. Now, you do have to pay attention to what Pokemon carry as potential coverage moves. For example, Weavile often carries Fighting-type moves, and Gengar also carries Focus Blast quite commonly. So, of course, if Tyranitar is switching in to resist the, uh, the Dark-type move, you also have to be aware of things like that. Now, since Mega Metacham is in, I don't have to worry about Fake Out anymore from that thing. Um, I also know that Garchomp cannot Mega Evolve. I'm not really sure what Garchomp wants to do to Mega Heracross. He could go for Earthquake, but it's resisted. And he could go for a uh, Dragon-type move, but that's not going to... Um, I could just blast him with the close combat, honestly. Uh, hmm. Let's see, if I lose Mega Heracross, then I still have Talonflame to clean things up. But Talonflame's going to lose half of his HP on switching. So I think the best thing here is just to go for the pin missile. Oh, he tried to set up. I am happy I didn't switch out. <laughs> that was definitely a good call. Not switching out there. And I got a critical hit. Um, I That may or may not have mattered. Of course, critical hits increase the damage you do by 50%. So minimum, maximum damage. I had one hit left uh, after the critical hit, I think. Uh, one... Wait, one, two, three, four, five. No, that crit definitely mattered there. I would have needed one more hit. But I do have priority on Talonflame. Now he brings in Gengar. Gengar is very commonly carry Hidden Power Fire. Uh, and of course, the only thing I really have to hit it with is Rock Blast. So there's really no reason to stay in here when I have a special wall in the form of Venusaur. Um, Sticky Web's not going to really bother Venusaur because he's already... Oh, he has Hypnosis Gengar. He's using a lot of inaccurate moves. I don't know. I, I don't like using a lot of moves that are highly inaccurate. He does hit it on the second try, though. I've used Hypnosis once in VGC. I think I used it eight times over four matches, and it missed every single time, so I just don't have a good track record with Hypnosis. But, you know, that's the risk you take sometimes. Now, I'm going for Leech Seed repeatedly here because all three of his Pokemon are susceptible to Leech Seed. Uh, I don't see him using Substitute with Gengar, so... I feel pretty good going that. Oh, interesting combination with Hex and Hypnosis. Normally you see will o -Wisp in Hypnosis. Um, still definitely want to Leech Seed something. If he's going to Hex again, a good switch might be into Tyranitar, and maybe I can save Venusaur for later. Of course, with his only special attacker being Gengar, one has to question how uh, the utility, rather, of Venusaur in this battle. So we're just going to go on into Tyranitar. That'll allow us to put up this, the Storm, break any possible... Um, Sashes that he might have, because I haven't had a chance to set up any entry hazards. But actually, now is a great time to set up some entry hazards, now that I look at it. Because, uh, oh, there's a Focus Blast. Ow! That eradicated me, unfortunately. But that's okay. That gives us a free switch now into... Um, I could go back into Venusaur and try to wake up. Or I could go on the Clef Key. Clef Key checks the last three things that he has there pretty well. As long as I slow something down with Thunder Wave, then Heracross might be able to outspeed it after the minus one. I'm not sure there. Um, let's just go back on the Venusaur and try to lead seed him again. Uh, hopefully I wake up. That'd be great. I'm gonna live with this Hex. Okay, now wake up. There we go. Lead seed. Good job, Venusaur. You're able to do that. Now I'll be able to live... And I'll live another Stealth Rock switch in, which is fantastic. Now, is he going to try to Hypnosis again, because that would be annoying, or is he just going to attack? That's the question. Uh, I can't really touch him either way. Let's just Sleep Powder in case he tries to... Okay. Alrighty, then. Gengar has been whittled down quite nicely, so now we can bring in Talonflame here and finish him off with a Brave Bird. Um, now, you'll notice that I have saved Talonflame up until now. Uh, it was really important to take out some of the bulkier things on his team, and the things that might cause might be holding Rocky Helmet, such as Garchomp. Uh, you definitely want to take those out before you try using it. Now, uh, I'm just going to go for the straight for the Brave Bird here. There's no reason to play around. He might go out in the Cloister, because Cloister can definitely take it. But that is okay by me. I'm not really worried about Cloister. Uh, he decides to leave Gengar in. That is definitely cool by me. And I... 
bring in Talonflame that the Sandstorm is ended, which is also very good. Alright, Weavile is in. Now, he may have Fake Out. Uh, he knows I can't switch out. So let's see if he has Fake Out. He does have Fake Out. Oh, I'm happy I roosted. it. Oh. Alrighty, let's just roost and get that HP back. If he goes for an Ice move, I'll be resisting it. Thank you, sir. And... Let's see here. Yep, very bird him now. Oh, almost. I definitely thought I could take out a Weavile now. He just went for Ice Punch that time. That is okay by me. We're going to go on to Cleffy because I resist both his Ice and his Dark type attacks, and I can hit him with a Play Rough. He's Low Kick. That's an interesting choice on Weavile. Oh, I should have set up Spikes. Oh well. Now Cloyster's going to be coming in here. And first of all, we're going to Thunder Wave him. And... Oh, he went for Rock Blast. Not particularly useful, but we're going to Torment him as well. Just so that he can't keep going for Rock Blast here. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in my Heracross. Uh, I don't think a play rough is going to do very much. Let's see. I'll try it. I don't know. Okay, he forfeited. Alrighty then. So that was that battle. We saw from that battle that I, we learned that we really need a rapid spinner on this team. Um, and uh, we also learned that... Uh, like I said earlier, Gengar carrying those fighting type moves. We have several fighting type switch ins, but of course Venusaur was put to sleep, so I wasn't able to fully utilize that. Um, but we did see we had some nice synergy between using Vaporeon as a baton passer into Heracross. So that worked out pretty well there. That's exactly why I wanted to do that. Now we really need a rapid spinner of some sort if we're going to continue to use Talonflame. Um, if there was. I mean, we could use Excadrill. Excadrill would give us, help us retain the steel typing and maybe switch up Stealth Rocks off of Tyranitar for coverage, and then give Excadrill Stealth Rocks and Rapid Spin. Uh, there are a few options we have there, I guess. So, I'm just waiting for the timer to run out here. I'll get one more match, um, and we'll, we'll let, what we will do is go ahead and go back into the Team Builder, get that extra match, and then uh, see if that team plays any better. So. Alrighty, so just like I said, I actually decided to try out Excadrill over Klefki on this team. Um, interesting synergy alongside Tyranitar with the Sand Rush ability. Uh, not really worried about doubling up on the fighting or the ground uh, weaknesses, just because for fighting, of course, we have Venusaur and Heracross, and for ground weaknesses, we have our nice immunity for Talonflame, who can come in on that easily, and of course Talonflame is weak to Electricity, whom Excadrill can switch in on to. Um, Excadrill's fire weakness, of course, is covered by Vaporeon and Tyranitar. Uh, and, of course, we still have the ability to set up Stealth Rocks and Rapid Spin, which means overrun Tyranitar. Instead of running Stealth Rocks, we can run something like Pursuit, just to... Especially if we're switching in on things like Talonflame, we can, we can hold them up right there. Now, um, these EVs on uh, Tyranitar didn't actually work out too well. Um just because we, we basically switched in once and then got blown up by that Focus Blast. So since we're using Pursuit now, we're trying to do a good chunk of damage to some things. It might be useful to take away some of these attack EVs here. Maybe just put in 148. Or I'm sorry, some of these defense EVs. I think I only need 44 EVs on a uh, um, Adamant one in order to live like a bullet punch coming from a, a Choice Bandit Caesar. Then we can put some into attack, and we can put the rest into special defense there. Now I'll also take those hits a little bit better. Not amazingly well, but a little bit better. Alright, so we're going to try that out. Of course, Heracross, Venusaur, Vaporeon, all stayed the same there. I really want to give Vaporeon some more speed. I, I don't know. I feel like it, it needs it. I don't... Special attack... I can take away this little bit and... Mm, I know I need a little... No, I'm going to leave it how it is. Alright, so we tweaked the team just a little bit. Let's go grab another match to see how things fare. Wow, it's easy to find matches today. Holy crap, look at this team. 
He has a Latios, a Landorus, a Thunderous, a Heatran, his own Tyranitar, and a Breloom. Now, of course, Latios... That's Latias, I think. Uh, yeah, Latias can go Mega. I don't know how that works on Pokemon Online or Showdown or whatever. So his Mega is probably Tyranitar. Uh, but interestingly, I really can use Excadrill well against his whole team. Um, so Excadrill, of course, has the Earthquake to hit. One, two, Pokemon here. Too bad I don't have Mold Breaker for once, actually. Um, he's probably going to start off with either a Breloom or Landorus to either set up Stealth Rocks or if this is Scarfed, I can put something to sleep. Both are pretty annoying leads, actually, to be completely honest. Um, if he sets up Stealth Rocks with this, if I start off with Vaporeon again, I can scare it out with a Water-type move. So Vaporeon is a good lead, actually. Hey, this decided to start off with Landorus. Probably just going to set up his Stealth Rocks. He might U-turn immediately. I don't see that happening. Um... Instead of going for the substitute immediately, because he can just break it, I think I'm just going to Scald immediately. Oh, he just goes immediately. Oh, that crit sucks. He went immediately for the U-turn. I definitely should have gone for the substitute there. I thought he was just going to set up his rocks, but I do get the burn on Latias, which is amazing. I think I've had eight matches with this Vaporeon between my game and Pokemon Showdown, and that's the first time I've gotten the burn with it. Unfortunately, uh, Latias can kind of wipe me out with a Draco Meteor here. I could go into Tyranitar, but that's a pretty obvious switch. He could easily go out into Vaporeon. Um, I'm going to try to wish. We'll see what happens here. I just I feel like the switch to Tyranitar is painfully obvious. Uh, he might have Refresh on Latias, which means the burn is a moot point anyway. There's a Draco Meteor. I do manage to live it, amazingly. Um, I get my Citrus Berry and my Wish. Draco Meteor did 42%, so that means I will be able to live another one. Um, and I have enough to substitute, but I don't think he is going to let me off that easily here. Now let's see here. And that's where those HP EVs on my Vaporeon really come through. Let's try... Hmm. I could be really, really ballsy and try to substitute now. Uh... That's not a horrible idea. I could also baton pass to see what he goes for, because obviously he's faster than me. So, what is he expecting me to do here? He's expecting me to switch raw. Raw! Alright, we're baton passing. He refreshes, alrighty. Baton pass, that brings us in safely to Tyranitar, and now this thing is trapped in here with me, and I'm going to pursue the hell out of it. Because <laughs> that's what Tyranitar does. And right, he's going to die to Sandstorm. Oh, he didn't... He survived the pursuit. That's amazing. Alrighty, then. I do have Ice Beam for this guy, so we're just going to go for that. He's probably just going to Earthquake or U-Turn. If he stays in, he's going to eat it. Just eat it. We cannot use Mega Heracross until he gets rid... Until I get rid of not only this, but uh, I also really need to get rid of uh, um, his Thunderous as well. So he goes out into that thing. I'm okay with that. I would have really liked to kill that Latios. I need to get up Stealth Rocks pronto now, though. I feel like his Stealth Rocks are going up now, which is a little annoying. Um, he's probably not going to go for a Fire-type move. He could go for a Steel-type move and get pretty good coverage against my whole team. So let's just go back onto a Porygon here. Okay. He doubled back out there. Uh, he's definitely... I feel like he's just going to go for the Earthquake this time now. Which could be a little annoying. Um, if only I were faster. All right. Uh, going out into Talonflame now would put some nice offensive pressure on him. But since he has Heatran and Tyranitar, he could just bring those in really easily. And I really need to save Talonflame for Breloom. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Just gonna keep him honest there. He gets another crit. I don't think it mattered even with my defensive investment. Um, but with the Sandstorm down... I don't think he can really touch Heracross. So I get to bring in Heracross here, Mega Evolve, and put the Hurting onto something. Rock Blast has great neutral coverage against this team except for Heatran and the Breloom. Bullet Seed, of course, is resisted by four or five things. We're not going for Bullet Seed. Close Combat is resisted by two things. 
One of them is in right now. And Pym Missile is resisted by... One, two, three things. So Close Combat is the best play. He's switching out Raw. Alright, good. He just brings out Latios. Bye-bye, Latios. Latios, whatever. You guys look the same when you're shiny. I don't appreciate it. Just wanted to get rid of something. He's bringing back in something here. He might set up in my face, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, I'm just going to go into Venusaur. Hopefully he doesn't use Nasty Plot. Psychic. Oh, well that sucks too. Of course, see how well Venusaur took that. Good job, Venusaur. Um, well, if that's the case, I'm going into Tyranitar. I can get some nice pursuit damage off on it as well if he stays in. So, <clears throat> did not see Psychic coming from Thunderous. That is a move. I think the last time I saw a Psychic move on a Thunderous was my friend Michael using one way, 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 way back in the day when we were playing fifth gen for the first time. That's not that far back in the day. I just really wanted to say it like that. All right, so I think he's just gonna stay in and maybe try to focus blast me if he has it. He may also have hammer arm, um, or he could just go out into Heatran again. Uh, either way, I'm just going to try to pursue him. Almost killed him again. I really need to get up Stealth Rocks. Alrighty. So here he's definitely just going to go for the Earthquake again, I believe. Um, we're just going to Ice Beam. Oh, he has Super Power. Did not see that coming. Alrighty then. That sucks. Ah, crap. Um, let's see here. Well, now I can kind of comfortably bring in Excadrill and do nothing. I can set up my rocks. <laughs> We're going to go out in the Heracross here. Uh, now that I don't have that drop anymore. I got rid of Latio, so now going for close combat makes even more sense. Because now if he brings in his uh, Thunderous, it'll die. But of course, if he stays in with Landorus, that could be trouble. Hmm. He's not going to bring in the Heatran. Or the Breloom, I don't think. So I think my best move is going to be to go for a neutral bullet seed. Because that'll hit almost everything that he has left there. And he brings in Breloom, I can just go out into Venusaur. So yeah, neutral bullet seed. There's the Heatran. Wow, I did not think he would go out into Heatran. That is very ballsy play of him. Of course, now I do get to see what item he has, so I can see what he... Any leftovers? Leftovers, alrighty. Alright, so I am max speed. So, if he's running leftovers, I doubt he's max speed, so we're just going to close combat him in the face. And this is why I like running max speed Heracross. It's just fun to read in the forums. Oh, it has a lower speed. There's no point in investing in its speed. It's like, no, you should still invest. It has base 75 speed. That's just right around average. So people expect you to not invest at all. So now that Landorus is back in here, he has not brought in his Tyranitar once. So that means I definitely need to keep Excadrill in order to hit Tyranitar, because that's definitely his Mega now that I've killed the Latios. Uh, he's going to Earthquake here. I don't see a U-turn making much sense because it's resisted. Of course, Earthquake is resi resisted too, but of course the U-turn will do more damage. Uh, not more damage, but it will give him more priority. Yeah, there we go. Switching priority, rather. And I didn't want to stay in and take that. Now I'm at least going to force him out into likely his Thunderous. Uh, I doubt he's going to... He, he could bring in Tyranitar here and try to set up on me. Or if he has Breloom, of course. I don't... He hasn't used it yet, so I know it's not Scarfed. Uh, there's the Breloom. So he's definitely going to try to set up here. Interesting switch. He can't really touch me. He has Rock Tomb. Oh, okay. There we go. Well, I'm okay with that. I can just go out into Palin Flame and threaten him right out of here. Um, we're just going to go straight for the Brave Bird. If he wants to switch into Heatran or Tyranitar, I can just U-turn away from both of those. Okay, he just left it in. Oh, he has a Sash. Look at this guy. Rock Tomb is going to kill me for sure. Oh, well. That is Unfortunato. Alrighty, then. Let's go ahead and go out into Excadrill. I should be able to live any one hit from him, I'd imagine, and I can put up my rocks, hopefully, because that'll kill off his uh, Thunderous at 8%. Ah, that thing is annoying to have sitting around here alive. Interestingly, Clef Key would have been really useful to have during this matchup to slow down um, his his four of his Pokemon, actually. But it, Spikes would not have been as useful because he has three Pokemon levitating. So, you kind of kind of go back and forth there. Now here he should just use a fighting type move, although without Life Orb, or without using 
poison, uh, focus punch or something, I don't think he's going to KO me. Okay, he just went for the mock punch. I'm just gonna go for the stealth rock. Because that's how I roll. Okay, he's probably just gonna go straight for mock punch again. I'm gonna hang on to Excadrill just in case because mock punch isn't going to do anything to Heracross. <coughs> I don't think I can win the battle from this point, but that's not going to stop me from trying. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I've lost, but you know, we keep on those. He just goes for the spore, that's expected there. Okay, I'm asleep for one turn, now hopefully I wake up. Oh man, more critical hits, I've been critical hit a lot this turn, this battle. Alright, we get rid of him. Unfortunately with that crit, I'm not going to be able to live any attacks now. That sucks. Uh, and now he's going to bring in Landorus most likely to intimidate me and hit me with an earthquake. Very unfortunate. I see him saying "aw" there. I don't. I don't. It may, I don't know, because depending on how much his earthquake does, it may or may not have mattered. I don't. It's hard to say. But uh, still, a good game. I wanted to avoid going for the close combat there, just to uh, avoid getting the defensive drops. But it's not going to help. Okay. Well, yeah. I guess that that um drop did matter actually just because, uh, well now I'm not going to have enough to take uh, Sandstorm damage, rather. Although, I'm probably not going to outspeed the Tyranitar anyway. I don't know, this is an interesting match. It's it's always interesting when each person on the field think that, thinks that the other person... Yeah, exactly, I have a speed drop. That's why I was like, I don't think I can win now. Because if I didn't have the speed drop and I still had HP left, I would definitely switch back out and then switch back in. But with the speed drop, eh, don't see it quite happening. Um, close combat, we'll try. Nope, there's a Lava Plume. Now I do have max speed on Excadrill, I'm adamant though. Don't see that working out too well right about now. I might outspeed though. Okay, he's just going to go in the... Okay, that dies. That's fine. I get a tiny bit of HP back. I don't think I can one-hit KO Mega Tyranitar with Earthquake. Oh, so close! So close! Alright, so that was a very good battle. I'm actually happy I got that. Um, uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed these battles here. I hope I gave you something to keep in mind when team building. I might use this team in the actual game at some point. Uh, but yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. Be sure to leave a like if you did enjoy, and let me know what you all would like to see next, any tutorials you guys would like to see. Alright, bye bye now.